If you grew up in the 90s, chances are you know about the world's number one video game action hero, Duke Nukem. He's come to kick ass and chew bubblegum, only to be out of said bubblegum on countless occasions, but nevertheless, he still saves our world and saves our babes, wanting nothing in return except for the occasional good cigar and a bad woman. Hey dudes and dudettes, I'm Derek with Game Somniac, and today I wanted to talk to you all about why I think Gearbox should just give 3D Realms the rights to the Duke Nukem franchise. As always, if you like our videos and you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell to be notified whenever we upload something new, and here we go! So you guys may or may not have heard that Bulletstorm is getting its own special release on the Switch. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the game, Bulletstorm was a game that came out in 2011. It was developed by People Can Fly and published by Epic Games. Now, it's one of those games that around that time was a lot like Rage. It was, it was really uh, unique and interesting in concept, but it just really didn't fit anywhere in the world of gaming. It sold really well and actually got great reviews, but it just it didn't go anywhere. It was just one of those, uh, it was like a one and done first person shooter. Now fast forward to 2016. A remastered version of the game is announced at E3 with a release for spring of 2017. It's a remaster that does really well, looks good, plays good, and even wins itself best remaster in Game Informer's 2017 Shooter of the Year awards. The game features some awesome new content, including new DLC, and oh yeah, if you pre-order the game, you get this specialized Duke Nukem Bullet Tour DLC, which is basically a campaign mode where the game's main protagonist, Grayson Hunt, is replaced with none other than the Duke himself. Out of left field, in comes Gearbox, Duke Nukem, Bulletstorm, why? Fuck you, that's why. It was something that just happened, with no explanation. All of a sudden, BAM! There was the Duke with fresh new dialogue from John St. John in a game where other characters reacted to Duke as if they still saw him as Grayson, but then you got Duke who acknowledged that he definitely wasn't in the right video game. It was, it was just kind of a weird thing. But that's what the Duke is now. He's just kind of a weird thing. You see, he's something of a guilty pleasure that nobody talks about. At least not this version of, of Duke Nukem. The, the Duke Nukem Forever version of Duke Nukem. You see, kids, in the 90s, Duke Nukem was a symbol. He was an icon. He was the true last action hero of action heroes. Duke Nukem 3D was like a digital Red Rider BB gun that no mother wanted their children to play with because the DOS fueled awesomeness that flashed on the screen would surely melt their eyes out. Sadly, those times are long gone, and the Duke is nothing more than a mere novelty. A reminder of when the world wasn't the snow globe of the universe. One that the universe's dad brought home as a gift from his business conference in Cincinnati. Same business conference where he met that lady Linda, who eventually becomes your new mom, when your old mom moves out because your, I mean the universe's dad and Linda, are gonna start a new family! Fans often express their disappointment with Duke Nukem Forever any chance they can get. Watch Mojo talks about it every other video they upload. Literally, Duke Nukem Forever has been featured in 8 videos on Watch Mojo's channel. Videos including Top 10 Games That Lost The Most Money The Game That Disappointed Us The Most Top 10 Games In Development Hell Top 10 Disappointing Video Game Sequels It amazes me how frequently Watch Mojo uses Duke Nukem Forever as a crutch to stand on when they can't come up with any intelligent video content, not that the other listings in their catalog are anything of quality. But, I digress. With fans left and right constantly expressing their dismay for Duke Nukem Forever, demanding more of the classic Duke Nukem 3D experience, Gearbox then released Duke Nukem 3D World Tour in the fall of 2016, an all-new remaster of the original Duke Nukem 3D using the source code from the original PC release, mind you. The game, however, seemed to fall flat with the majority of gamers, older fans just seeing it as nothing more than a pathetic cash grab. Now, I highly enjoyed the new remaster. Sure, it doesn't include the additional campaigns that Megaton Edition has, but I own Megaton Edition on Steam and PS3, so I can go play them whenever I want. Problem solved. It does feature an all-new official fifth episode created by the original level designers with all-new music composed by Lee Jackson, including newly recorded dialogue from the Duke himself, John St. John. You can also play the game in true 3D or switch back to classic graphics for an original Duke Nukem 3D experience. Now, despite his movie debut as a character in Ready Player One and the re-release of Bulletstorm for the Nintendo Switch, the Duke has been missing in action with no news from Gearbox as to when we might see something new from the 90s classic IP. Although I've said it before in previous videos, as long as we continue to bash and belittle the Duke for Duke Nukem Forever and Duke Nukem World Tour, Gearbox will never be able to show potential investors that Duke Nukem is a lucrative franchise warranting another installment. Now, after the release of Duke Nukem Forever, but before the backlash, 
uh, there were plans for a new origin game titled Duke Begins. And uh, the plans for that game were well underway. Unfortunately, due to negative reviews and poor sales from Duke Nukem Forever, the company canceled all plans to continue the series as is. Now, in this new modern age, the Duke now finds himself pitted against three of the toughest adversaries he's ever had to contend with. It's these adversaries that must first be overcome before the Duke can rise again. These three villainous tyrants are Relevance, History, and Randy Pitchford. Unfortunately, we live in this new world ice age, where snowflakes have taken on sentient life and proceed to walk among us, most oftentimes being offended by the littlest thing. Duke himself is a long forgotten and outdated representation of what the general male desires to be. And what the general male desires to be back in the 90s was apparently quite offensive to the general male nowadays. In the 90s it was hot, explosive, action packed. It was something the world had never seen before and everyone wanted a piece of it. Now, but now we see it all the time. It's nothing new, it, nobody's impressed. How we see it has also changed. Video games are more developed now. They're not simple, which Duke Nukem always was. Just like Doom, Duke Nukem had one mission. Kill the enemies and find the exit. That style of gameplay is just, it's, it's too fast for the modern gamer's need for prolonged and immersive entertainment. And again, we live in this world now where everything offends somebody. Somebody's always offended at, at the littlest thing. And, and it shows. I mean, look at how the adult content of Duke Nukem Forever was received. Professional douchebag Adam Sessler of G4TV's X-Play noted in his review of Duke Nukem Forever how the game has a creepy, hateful view towards women, with the troubling nature of the alien breeding only existing to be played for laughs, implicating that the game purposefully abuses women for the sole reason that they're just, well, I guess, sexual objects without any value. A discount Woody Harrelson then continues to show us on the doll where Duke Nukem Forever heard him, with his political movement motivated opinions, speaking about the game as if it was trying to put an end to the feminist movement, even though I remind everybody that this is only a game involving who? Fictional characters. Fictional characters. All in all, Duke is just not relevant anymore. He's not relevant to this world. This world has changed beyond the Duke, without the Duke. It's. It's just so different from what it used to be, and the Duke no longer fits. The world's not ready for the Duke, and if we as a society keep going in this direction, the direction we've been going for the last few years, then we may never be ready. The Duke, like every other rock star, has a past that he'll need to overshadow before anyone will take him seriously again. Unfortunately, Duke Nukem Forever took a rather negative toll on the booze, babe, and bomb-loving action star's reputation, reducing him from the king of the world to the king of vaporware. The sad thing is, Duke Nukem Forever isn't even the worst game ever, it's just an FPS game that due to the circumstances outside of its control, didn't live up to the hype and everyone blew it out of proportion. The crazy thing is, there are way worse games than Duke Nukem Forever. I mean, let's see, just off the top of my head, we've got Die Katana, Blood 2 The Chosen, Turning Point Fall of Liberty, Superman 64, The Simpsons Wrestling, Mortal Kombat Special Forces, Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero Mythologies, Island Peril, The Fifth Element, Overkill's Walking Dead, No Man's Sky, Aliens Colonial Marines, literally anything and everything created ever by Capstone, Haze, Shaq Fu, Bad Day LA, Fallout 76, Fucking E.T. for crying out loud. Looking past all the negative, what became of Duke Nukem Forever, the Duke Nukem Forever we all know today, is actually a decent FPS shooter. It's not great, it'll never be great. The game was disappointing, nobody's saying it's not, it'll never be what we want it to be, but when you can look past that, there's still some fun to be had with the game that we have. It's, it's not as bad as people truly believe it to be. And unfortunately though, it's, it's not me the Duke needs to convince, it's, it's everyone else. Now, last but not least, the worst of all three boss enemies, Randall Stewart Pitchford II. This man, professional magician turned video game developer, was offered a job by 3D Realms in the early 90s and in that time worked on both Duke Nukem 3D and Shadow Warrior. After some time with the company, a group of 3D Realms developers and programmers ended up leaving the company to form Rebel Boat Rocker around 1997. Now, Pitchford left 3D Realms to join them in May of that year. The company's first game was to be the first-person shooter, Prax War, originally set to be published by Electronic Arts. 
However, EA opted to cancel the game around January of 1999, and with no publisher-backed project, Pitchford then joined four of his other colleagues, who also happened to work with him on 3D Realms projects back in the day, and together they founded Gearbox Software in February of 1999. Now, Randy Pitchford officially acquired the rights to the Duke Nukem franchise in 2010 after Take-Two had a falling out with 3D Realms, who at the time had disbanded and let go a majority of its development team. Gearbox then continued development on what would eventually become the nickelback of the gaming industry, Duke Nukem Forever. And since then, they have only revisited the series once, that being the World Tour remaster of Duke Nukem 3D for the 20th anniversary. Now in 2015, Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford stated that the company had done early concept work on a new Duke Nukem game. However, in 2017, a Gearbox employee stated that the company had no interest in returning to the franchise. Randy once said in front of a live audience that he can take a joke. He owns the Duke Nukem franchise, for fuck's sakes. I love a good joke. I mean, for fuck's sake, I own the Duke Nukem franchise. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Which to me sounds like Randy thinks that the series is just a fucking joke. Now maybe Randy said what he said in jest, and maybe it was just to, you know, lighten up the mood, whatever it happened. I'm not quite sure what the events preceding that were, but it really just comes across as, I'm Randy Pitchford, I own Duke Nukem, I don't give a shit, fuck you guys. The funny thing is, like, Randy's probably one of the most hated developers in the world next to Phil Fish. He's probably, like, the runner-up to be the next Phil Fish. Fans have called him out in the past. People accused him of lying during the development and promotion process of Aliens Colonial Marines. Randy was accused for, like, showing investors dynamic effects and other features that were in the game currently during the time he was showing it to them, but then he would remove shit later. It's like even now, did you guys hear that the former general counsel of Gearbox is suing Randy under the accusation that he received a secret $12 million bonus from Take-Two Interactive as like some advance against Borderlands profits? I mean, it's, it's crazy, there's a bunch of articles like these all over the net and it really makes you wonder how much of it isn't true. I mean, look, I, I may have it all wrong, M maybe Randy's like the greatest guy ever and I'm just the biggest asshole in the world trying to be a journalist on YouTube. I, I don't know the man personally. And I can't confirm what shady wrongdoings he may or may not be perpetrating behind the scenes. But I do know that he's not doing the Duke any favors. Why did Randy want the rights to the Duke Nukem franchise? What was his motive? At one time in my life, I probably would have told you that I thought it was because he was a dedicated developer who loves the series just as much as I do. But now I think he wanted it for the money. The easy buck that he thought he could have made off of Duke Nukem's reputation alone. Sadly, we're not buying it, and that's the problem. He's got nothing to offer the series, but holds on to it in his back pocket just in case. Clearly, Randy doesn't have it in him to save the series, nor does he even really care, and why should he? He's got bigger and better things going on for him right now, with the upcoming release of Borderlands 3, and Borderlands 2 VR, and Borderlands Game of the Year Edition, and, um, uh, oh, Desert Bust VR! What the fuck is Desert Bus? I propose an alternate solution. Boys and girls, I believe that there is one studio that with the help of their parent company may be able to breathe life into this dead and dying video game series. And that studio is 3D Realms and Slipgate Ironworks APS, formerly Interceptor Entertainment. 3D Realms knows the IP and even tried making a Duke game or two without Gearbox's permission some odd years ago. <laughs> which, which led to more lawsuits. Slipgate Ironworks in its early years worked on Duke Nukem 3D Reloaded, which much like their reboot of Rise of the Triad, put the Duke in a grittier, dark, hyper-realistic environment with a huge upgrade in graphics, game effects, the, the works. Fans loved the work they had put into the potential project and were equally disappointed when work on the game had ceased indefinitely. 3D Realms has ambition, and from the looks of Ion Maiden and Wrath Aeon of Ruin, they still have it, and they know what to do with it. Did you all know? 3D Realms found near-complete builds of the 2001 version of Duke Nukem Forever, which they were in talks of releasing at one point with the help of Gearbox Software? Now, according to the internet, and this is the internet, so according to the internet, it was Frederick Schreiber who laid out the offer to prepare all this content for free and do any necessary work without any charge as fan service as well as prepare the Duke Nukem Forever mod tools for free. 
and he was speaking to Randy about all this, and Randy's side of the conversation involved rambling about certification costs and QA, as well as saying that content like this would need to be packaged into a, like a special edition, a special game edition where profit could be made and all that bullshit. And the, I, for one, would fucking die to play the original version of Duke Nukem Forever. It looked so good back in the day. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hear that at the very least the old builds exist, but I want to play it. Now, I found this information online on a video game forum site, so who knows how valid the claim is, let alone if the conversation even went down that way. But if it is true, then just in that conversation alone, you can see the difference in product interest between the two companies. The good thing about 3D Realms is that they're rebuilding their reputation as a dev company. They currently don't have one successful hit game after another, putting the pressure on them to continue the streak. They can do anything they want. Randy's got his hands full with the Borderlands hype. Here's one less thing he has to worry about. Give the rights to 3D Realms and let them work on, on small, some small Duke Nukem side games to get the ball rolling. Get him back in the public eye. Bring back D-Day or Endangered Species. I would say Mass Destruction, but that ended up becoming a uh, bombshell and who wants to buy the same game twice? I wouldn't even mind seeing 3D Realms make some spin-off games that feature the Duke in lore or via in-game cameo. Make a game where Neo LA is under attack, aliens are everywhere, killing anything and everyone in sight. And four kids will make the protagonists four kids. Check this out. Four kids battle against aliens to decide the fate of the world. Some shit like that. Single players can choose between the four kids or play with friends on, on a four-player co-op system. And at the very end of the game, you find out that the main boss is the ultra mega cycloid alien god or some shit. And then all of a sudden, from behind the kids, from behind the four kids, comes a voice. It's Duke Nukem himself who commends the kids for a job well done thus far. But this fight is his to finish. He raises the Devastator, walks into the final boss fight. BAM! Game goes platinum, pretty much sells itself. How about, like, how about a bombshell Duke Nukem crossover game? Or reboot the Duke completely, and this time keep the futuristic Neo LA theme that were featured in the first two games, you know, with enhanced futuresque laser weapons, half cyborg alien, meta humans. Go all out, man! Babes, bullets, and bombs! The only challenge I think 3D Realms would face is redundancy. You see, Duke's only ever had but two enemies Dr. Proton and aliens. And they've been used, like, time and time again, countless times. There, there's nobody else, he's never fought anybody else. You'd have to come up with another enemy for Duke to fight to keep it interesting, and honestly, I can't think of one. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, just try to optimize the original concept. Would anybody be mad at a remaster or a complete remake of Duke Nukem 1 and 2? Keep it a platformer, or remake it all together in first person to match up with Duke Nukem 3D. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And really, I just, I think that at the end of the day, the fans just want something without Randy Pitchford's name on it. But then again, 3D Realms may not even have any interest in the Duke right now. I think they'd be willing, more willing, to try to revitalize the series than Gearbox is, but they've got a lot of good things going for them right now, and considering Duke Nukem almost destroyed the company, who knows? Thanks for watching, guys and gals. Be sure to let us know in the comments below what you thought of the video and what your opinion is as far as the Duke goes. Let us know what your favorite Duke Nukem game is, and be sure to subscribe for more video game news and entertainment right here at Game Somniac. Bye bye.